High blood pressure is incredibly dangerous. It silently elevates our risks of heart attacks, strokes, and all-cause death rates. And while exercise has long been a go-to solution for lowering blood pressure, exciting new research has identified a ridiculously simple exercise that's also surprisingly powerful. In this video, I'll break down the research to reveal this game-changing exercise that can slash our blood pressure in as little as 30 minutes a week. Plus, I'll walk you through how to do this exercise in the right way so that you can start reaping the benefits. So the first question is, are some exercises really better than others when it comes to lowering blood pressure? Well, a new meta-analysis was published last month to investigate this question. It pulled together results from 84 randomized controlled trials. They divided exercise into four types. The first is aerobic. This would include activities like running, jogging, and cycling. The second is dynamic resistance. This would be things like squats and push-ups. The third is isometric resistance. This is when our muscles are tensed but aren't moving, so the plank is a popular example of this type of exercise. And the fourth type is combined aerobic and dynamic resistance. Here's what they found. All four types of exercise lowered blood pressure significantly. The overall average effect was about seven units reduction in systolic blood pressure. That's the higher number in a blood pressure reading. But which exercise was best? The average reduction for different types of exercise, it was pretty close. So that study concluded that there were no significant differences in the effectiveness between the different types of exercise. But that doesn't give the full picture because there was another meta-analysis published last year that gave us a different answer. That 2020 study used the same four categories of exercise, but it added one more, high intensity interval training or HIT workouts. After careful statistical analysis, they were able to rank the different exercise in terms of how much they reduced blood pressure. They found, surprisingly, that HIT had the weakest effect and isometric exercise, like the plank exercises, to have the strongest effect on lowering blood pressure. Notice the bars for each exercise type. That represents the range of results seen in the different trials. The red dot shows us the average reduction, so we can see that HIT, aerobic and dynamic resistance training are all fairly similar. Some of the results for isometric exercises, however, are dramatically more powerful. And here's where it gets really interesting. The researchers divided the main type of exercise into subgroups, and this gives us a finer grain view of the effects of the different exercise types. So when we look for the most effective subgroup exercise, it turns out to be, drum roll, wall squats. So we need to ask, why do these two studies show different results? The first concludes that all categories of exercise are about the same in terms of its blood pressure lowering effect, but last year's study finds isometric exercise to be especially powerful, and we need to get this right so that we can tailor our workouts to maximize the blood pressure lowering effect. So here's what I think is going on. There are crucial differences in the methodology used between these two studies. This year's study only looked at individuals who had elevated blood pressure, but last year's study also included studies with individuals with normal blood pressure as well. So why does this matter? Well, look at the chart from last year's study. It shows the impact of exercise broken down by the blood pressure of the study participants at the beginning of the study. Notice the effect size of all of the types of exercise is much stronger for those with elevated blood pressure. So if we're looking at subjects with elevated blood pressure, the effects of exercise types, they look broadly similar, but isometric exercise exercises made a significant impact even for those with a normal blood pressure. So when we take all groups together, we can see the relative effectiveness more clearly. There is an important consistency between the two studies though. They both show us that each of these main types of exercise can significantly lower blood pressure, which is great news when we factor in exercise snacks, so more on that shortly. We all have different preferences for the kinds of exercise that we find easier and more enjoyable to do. Some people don't like jogging but enjoy lifting weights. For others, it's the opposite, and the research shows us that we can lower our blood pressure no matter what kind of exercise we do. So even if it's just walking, when the researchers looked at exercise subgroups, they found that walking reduces blood pressure by an average of two to three units. The lesson is that any kind of physical activity is going to benefit our health and is always worth doing. But I want to return to the exercise that last year's study found to be the most effective, so wall squats. If we're looking for the greatest impact on our blood pressure in the least amount of time, this may well be it. Especially since we don't need any special equipment and we can do this at home 
or at work as an exercise snack. So exercise snacks are short bursts of physical activity that we can sprinkle throughout the day, like mini workouts, instead of going on a long training session. So instead of carving out a 30 minute chunk of time to hit the gym, for example, we might consider doing a few sets of wall squats between meetings. I do an exercise snack during my 15 minute paperwork breaks at the clinic for example. So let's have a look at exactly how to do this exercise. We need to stand with our back against the wall and slide down until we're in a squat position. Keep your lower legs vertical and your knee should be right above your ankles but not pushing forward over your toes. Adjust your height until it feels that you're working at about a 4 out of 10 on a difficulty scale. At 4, you'd be challenged but you'd be confident that you could hold that position for about 2 minutes if needed. And try holding that position for around 2 minutes, then rest for 2 minutes and then repeat that a few times. If it starts feeling too easy or too hard, you can make small adjustments in the height until it feels about right. So it's possible to do this powerful exercise at home and find the right intensity to reap its benefits. But you might be thinking, are these differences in blood pressure that these studies have found really such a big deal? In other words, if we lower our blood pressure by 5 or 6 units, does that really translate to lower health risks? So let's start by answering, what are the risks associated with high blood pressure? And the most important ones have to do with our hearts and brains. High blood pressure puts us at an increased risk of heart attacks and strokes, both of which can be deadly. But what counts as high? Because doctors used to think that a blood pressure up to 140 was fine. But as evidence has accumulated, we've discovered that even at that level, it's associated with significant risks. The first big wake-up call came from the SPRINT study, which stands for the Systolic Blood Pressure Intervention Trial. This study was massive, involving over 9,000 participants, so the findings are hard to ignore. The goal was to figure out if lowering systolic blood pressure to below 120 would protect against heart attacks, strokes and other problems better than just sticking to the old target of 140. The people in the study were at high risks of heart disease, but they didn't have diabetes or a history of strokes. They were split into two groups, one aimed for less than 140 and the other aimed for less than 120. Now here's where it gets really interesting. The results were so significant that they had to stop the study early. The study was supposed to last for at least 4 to 6 years, but after 3.3 years it was obvious that lowering blood pressure to below 120 made a huge difference. There was a 27% lower risk of having having a heart attack, stroke or dying from these causes each year. So even a blood pressure of 140 is higher than ideal and we've got good reason to aim to get it down to below 120. That's in line with the recent changes in the European Society of Cardiology recommendations. They now recommend pursuing a target of between 120 to 129, with exceptions for certain cases. They also strongly recommend measuring blood pressure in a setting other than a doctor's office. The reason is that people often feel nervous when they see doctors like me, which raises their blood pressure and makes the reading inaccurate. So the most accurate way to measure blood pressure is when you're in a familiar environment and you're relaxed, like at home. So let's return to the main question then. Does lowering your blood pressure by say 5 to 10 units make a difference? Well the answer is a resounding yes. A systematic analysis of studies on blood pressure and cardiovascular risk includes some eye-opening numbers. Clinical trials show a reduction of blood pressure by just 10 units cuts the risk of coronary heart disease by 22% and strokes by a whopping 41%. And it might be an even bigger deal for some. So the numbers we see in the exercise studies, where blood pressure is reduced by about 7 units, this is a really big deal for our health. But given how important lowering our blood pressure is, we want to use every tool at our disposal. So exercise is just one of them. Diet also matters. In fact, there's one particular nutrient that most of us aren't getting enough of, and that's been shown to drive down blood pressure at levels similar to exercise. It's so important that I've even included it in microvitamin to make sure that I get enough. So make sure to check out this next video here to find out what this key nutrient is and how to make sure that you're getting the right amount.